it's your money month in today's installment. We want to take a look at alternative investments and what they can do for your portfolio amid all this volatility. Let's bring in Rob Tetro. He's portfolio manager and head of Tetro Wealth Advisory Group at Canaccord Genuity. Great to have you with us, Rob. Uh, for the uninitiated, let's just start with a sort of a, a broad understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about alternative investments. So for me, alternative investments, and thank you for having me on the show, Greg. Always great to be here. Uh, for me, alternative investments, the way I look at it, it's typically an asset class that is kind of a pension style approach to investing, uncorrelated to the markets. Generally, you might get some tax efficiency there. Not moving on a daily day-to-day day -day basis, typically. Uh, the liquidity is typically a little bit less, but the, the real crux of alternative investments, basically it's not stocks, not bonds. All right, so you're not in the stocks, you're not in the bonds. What are you in and how does a retail investor get there? Okay, so there's a couple classes that we like. One of the ones that I really like is private real estate. That can be done either through an off-the-shelf offering, through uh, you know, a private pool or a private fund, or it can be done through an actual limited partnership of a private deal. Typically, the limited partnership on a private deal, you'll want to make sure it's you have a large net worth, you know, maybe five mil liquid plus, and then you can take hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollar sleeves in these private deals. These private deals might be one building. You might be re redeveloping one little area in Saskatoon or, or Vernon, BC or Winnipeg. Private real estate. So that's one. Another one is private infrastructure. So infrastructure plays, you know, maybe it's solar, maybe it's data centers, maybe it's toll bridges, airports, etc. Private infrastructure. A couple other ones, private equity is one that's been around forever. But private equity typically it's uh, companies that don't trade and you know you get a lower multiple you buy them at a lower multiple ideally eventually you get a higher multiple for them farmland music royalties uh, private debt can be classified as private uh, as fixed income but private debt's another one too all right I, i'm i'm up to speed on you know the private real estate the private equity uh infrastructure music royalties when, when did uh, a guy like me get a shot at getting a piece of that action you know, it's funny, every time I talk about alts, this one always comes up as an important one. I, I like it because I think there's a lot more possibilities for streaming revenue in the future. So you think of my kid's PS5, you know, he's playing, and every time he's playing, there's music that's streaming. You think of your Peloton, or your bikes, or your music. There's a lot more ways that people are streaming music now. So just like a, a, an artist can sell a catalog to a pension fund, an artist can also sell a catalog to uh, a pool, uh, an investment fund that collects and accumulates music royalties. They get the royalty every time the song is played. And then ideally over time, you get an increase in the number of plays, which increases the revenue, which obviously increases the value of your royalty or your fund. So we've owned music royalties for a while. We've done it through ICM, but it's a, it's a neat way for individuals to get access to an alternative asset class, likely recession proof. Interesting stuff. I was gonna make a cheesy joke about you know alternative investments and alternative music royalties. I guess I just made the cheesy joke. Okay, so that's some pretty intriguing stuff there, Rob. Uh, what about the things you want to stay away from if you're thinking about alternative investments? Well, here's the thing. There's so much junk out there. You really got to be careful if you're getting into this. So be careful about the liquid alts, the the kind of the liquid alt funds offered by you know maybe exempt market products or stuff like that be careful about the long shorts the hedge funds i would always tell you if you're investing in an alternative you better be darn sure that you are able to explain it to your buddy or your neighbor can you actually explain what you own if you can't explain what you own you shouldn't own it so if you can understand and appreciate music royalties you know 20 seconds i was able to explain it these long shorts or they're doing commodities or they're you know they're, they're taking a piece off the off the yield curve and they're trading that and they're doing derivative on a, on a future if you actually can't explain it don't get it you shouldn't own it so be very careful about hedge funds and long shorts that basically give carte blanche to the portfolio manager to do whatever the heck he or she wants. Those you have to be careful because you end up getting more risk and more volatility than you would in traditional equities. Yeah, that's great advice for anything, right? Just understand what you're doing before you embark on it. So people listening to this conversation, they're intrigued. I know they're intrigued by what you're saying. What are the first steps if they want to get their toes in? Well, I mean, there are very few of these that are available, unfortunately, to the retail investor through like, ETFs or stuff like that. So you really almost need to work uh, with a pension style portfolio manager like myself or others out there. Um, I would reach out to your advisor and I'd ask him what access they have to real alternatives. And obviously, if they don't, come find a guy like me.